Good morning. Welcome to today's online church service. As always, we are so glad that you can join us through this medium, and we pray that God would speak to you through His Word and His message today. Let's bow our heads as we begin with the word of prayer. So Lord God, we stop for a moment this morning to recognize and remember the multitude of blessings that you have given us. We are mindful of all the ways in which you have lifted us when we have fallen low. We ask, Lord, that you would be with us here and now in this moment as we prepare to hear your word for our lives. O oh Lord, the one who lifts us up, we pray that you would come and take your place of prominence in our hearts today. Help us to listen closely for your word to us. Remind us that you are always with us throughout all of our lives. Would you give us confidence in your presence so that we might go into your world ready to witness to your love through our works and deeds. In this we pray through the name of Christ. Amen. Friends, today we are reverting back to our lectionary readings, the set readings for this Sunday. We are focusing in on the Old Testament reading for today, which comes from the well-known story of Jonah, Jonah and the whale. We are looking at Jonah chapter 3, verses 10, and then are reading all the way through to chapter 4, verse 11. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. But to Jonah, this seemed very wrong, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord, Isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? That is what I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. But the Lord replied, Is it right for you to be angry? Jonah had gone out and sat down at a place east of the city. There he made himself a shelter, sat in its shade, and waited to see what would happen to the city. Then the Lord God provided a leafy plant and made it grow up over Jonah to give shade for his head to ease his discomfort. And Jonah was very happy about the plant. But at dawn the next day, God provided a worm which chewed the plant so that it withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind, and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He wanted to die and said, It would be better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the plant? It is, he said, and I'm so angry I wish I were dead. But the Lord said, You have been concerned about this plant. Though you did not tend to it or make it grow, it sprang up overnight and died overnight. And should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh, in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left, and also many animals? This is the word of God. Thanks be to God for his word. Now this is a fascinating story including a conversation between the Lord and Jonah. It's amazing to see how brutally honest Jonah is about his feelings, even his feelings towards God. And it's amazing to see how God is patient in dealing with Jonah, but at the same time has a great way of teaching Jonah to kind of get over himself. There's lots that's going on here that is useful and helpful for us. But we begin with a bit of background. So many of us know the story of Jonah being a prophet who was called by God to go to the city of Nineveh to preach to them, to try and turn them from their wicked ways. Jonah doesn't want to go to Nineveh. He instead decides to flee in the opposite direction to Tarshish. While on the way there on a boat, the boat hits a massive storm and Jonah is thrown off the boat. He is swallowed by a whale where he lives inside the whale for three days. He eventually prays to God and God rescues him. The whale tosses him out and Jonah is once again on dry land. 
he is finally convinced that he can't run away from what God has asked him to do. And so he goes to Nineveh with Gradually. He doesn't want to go because he thinks that if the Ninevites hear God's message and change their ways, then they will be forgiven. If they don't hear the message, they'll stay the same and God will smite them. You see, Nineveh was the city of Israel's great enemy. It was filled with people that Jonah didn't like. Filled with people that Jonah wanted to get rid of. And so, Jonah was called to go and prophesy to Nineveh, but he refused. He tries to escape his divine mission. His problem with Nineveh is that he doesn't want them to turn from their sin. He wants them to perish. He is worried that God's word will change their hearts and minds. And that is exactly what happens. In chapter 3, verse 10, our first verse of our reading today, we hear that God sees how the Ninevites turn from their evil ways, and God changes his mind, refuses to send calamity upon them. God changes his mind, and this really irks Jonah. The Bible says that in Jonah chapter 4, verse 1, Jonah became displeased and angry. He prayed out to God. Listen to his words. Jonah said, O Lord, is this not what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning. For I knew that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger and abounding in love, ready to relent from punishing. Jonah ran away from God because he was afraid that his preaching in a foreign land might change the hearts of people and save them from destruction. It's amazing that Jonah knows God is abounding in love and clearly enjoys the fact that God is slow to get angry with him. But he doesn't want that for other people. I've heard it described before that Jonah, in this kind of character, has an eye problem. And it's not a problem with his vision, but a problem with himself. Jonah is forever saying, I told you this, Lord. I wanted things to go that way. I didn't want this to happen. I didn't want to have to go through this. I, I, I. Jonah has an eye problem that he is too inwardly focused. He can't see the bigger picture. He can't see what God is doing. I wonder if any of this sounds familiar. <laughs> I wonder if that is something we all perhaps struggle with. An over-focus uh, on ourselves. We perhaps also have our problems. Jonah continues in verse 3 by saying, And now, Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Do you hear how dramatic Jonah is being? He's saying, Lord, I would rather be dead than see my enemies saved. Then see my enemies experience your love. God comes right back at him by saying, Jonah, is it right for you to be this angry? God questions Jonah about why this irks him so much. Why is it, Jonah, that you are angry that your enemies are being saved? Jonah then goes out of the city and he takes up a place where he can sit and see what is going to happen to Nineveh. He is still hoping that Nineveh will be destroyed, even though he expects that God will relent. And while he is sitting there, God raises up the small bush for him that grows and grows and grows and becomes bigger and has a nice shady leaf with which he can sit on. The next day, God sends a worm, and just as quickly as that plant appears, it disappears, destroyed by the worm that eats it up. And then the next day, God sends a hot wind and a hot sun to make Jonah truly feel like he wants to die. God initially provides relief for Jonah's discomfort, but then takes it away. And then Jonah gets really, really angry. Again, he says that he would rather die than live. Jonah's place of comfort is gone. God questions Jonah again, saying, Is it right for you to be angry? Is it right for you to be angry that the bush was here and now it's gone? 
Jonah says, yes, I'm angry enough to die. But then God teaches Jonah a lesson by saying, well, you've got angry about this bush that was here one day and gone the next. You never planted the bush. You never cared for it or tended it. Yet you are upset when it is gone. And God says, how must I feel about my people, the Ninevites? They are people I have created. I have tended to them. I have cared for them. I have provided for them. I don't want to see them gone. I love them. Can't you understand that, Jonah? It's a great moment for Jonah who realizes that he has been more concerned about his own desires and what he wants rather than the lives of 120,000 people, people that God loves. So how does the story end? Well, it ends with Nineveh repenting, turning back to God and hundreds of thousands of people being saved. But what happens to Jonah? Does Jonah repent and turn back to God? Does Jonah say sorry for his outbursts? Does Jonah get over himself? Well, in that we're not really given an answer. It's left rather open-ended. Enough for us to maybe think about how we would respond. So how is it that we can relate to Jonah? Maybe we need to just take time and recognize that there are ways that all of us have run away from God. We can also relate to Jonah in the sense that many of us have been angry with God, frustrated at the way he does things or doesn't do. Have you ever, just like Jonah, wanted to just give up, throw in the towel and walk away? Maybe you can relate to Jonah in the sense that there are enemies, people you see as enemies who you don't want to prosper. Maybe the real question is, is who are those people that you would rather see the back of than see them being blessed by God? Who are your enemies? Who are the people that you have unforgiveness in your heart for. See, this great story of Jonah is powerful because there's so much that we have in common with him. So in the real crux of the matter is, what then can we learn from Jonah? There's a couple of points worth noting today. The first one is, if we remember the story of Jonah in the stomach of the whale, in the darkness of that situation and the hopelessness of his predicament. We see Jonah crying out to God, praying to God about the problems he is facing. And God hears him from the belly of the whale. It's a great reminder for wherever you are in your life right now, that God hears our cries for help. If God can hear us from the belly of the whale, surely it means he can hear us from anywhere. It means that there is no place and no circumstance that you find yourself in where God is not there, where you cannot connect with God. Maybe that can be a source of hope and of peace for you today. Secondly, we learn that ultimately we cannot run away from God's plan or God's calling in our lives, can we? Jonah reminds us that God remains in complete control. And that in the end, God's will is always what is done. So are there things that you've been trying to avoid? Things that you've been trying to forget about? Things that God wants you to do that you do not want to do? Maybe you could save yourself a whole lot of trial and struggle and difficulty by just relenting and giving in and going with God who is in control. We can trust God and His plan for our life because He is good and He is loving and it is ultimately what is best for us. What is it that you've been running away from, avoiding, not wanting to do? Maybe today God is calling you to stand up and to do that thing He is nudging you towards. And then thirdly, really the story of Jonah is a story of unforgiveness. Of the bitterness that lives in Jonah's heart. It's a story that reminds us to love our enemies. Now our enemies might not be a nation that is frustrating us. 
Maybe it is a person who has hurt you. Maybe it is a, a work situation that is getting the better of you. Maybe it is a pain caused, trauma that you faced a long time ago, and yet this bitterness still reigns in your heart. Maybe we need to hear the message that God speaks to Jonah. That God cares about even the people who have wronged us and hurt us. God cares for our enemies, but He also cares for us. He wants us to know that we are loved by Him and that we can forgive others because God's love is enough to heal our hurts. And so we can let go of that pain, but also let go of the hold that those enemies have on us. We can love them with the love of God. And ultimately that is what is good for us. So who is it that you need to love this coming week? Who is it that you need to truly forgive? There is great encouragement in this passage as well. In Daniel, another prophet, 9 verse 9, we hear these words, The Lord our God is merciful and forgiving, even though we have rebelled against Him. Jonah reminds us that yes, life, oh, life often throws curveballs our way. But this passage from Daniel reminds us of the powerful message of God's forgiveness. God is merciful towards us. He loves us even when we act out against Him or against His people. And that forgiveness that we experience from God is powerful and life-changing. And that's why we are called to pass it on to others. You know, the irony in the story is that the evil nation, the evil people of Nineveh, repented and turned to God. But we are not so sure how Jonah ended up. Yes, God wanted Jonah to minister to Nineveh, to change them. But God also wanted to work in the heart of Jonah. The very thing that Jonah was sent to do that saved so many thousands of people was the very thing that got him stuck and worked up about. Jonah needed to repent and find God's graciousness for himself. And only when he did that would he live with the freedom away from bitterness and anger and frustration. And that's what God wants us to do. To live in the freedom that forgiveness brings. Loving others as Christ has loved us. Now I'm reminded of Dr. Ross Ulifia, who was the president of my seminary. He used to end off every single service, chapel service we went to, with the words, Now go and live as forgiven people, and go and live as forgiving people. You see, Jonah forgot that. He forgot that he too was forgiven, and he couldn't find a way to be forgiving. May we not make that same mistake. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.